Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 37, How to Create a Liberty-Based Community, with my guests, Justin Longo and Amanda Mill, founders of Liberty on the Rocks. We discuss how and why they organize a freedom-oriented meetup group, which has now expanded to multiple states and countries, in order to satisfy their desire to hang out and socialize with more like-minded people. Remember, if you don't have what you want, build it. Also, if you'd like to receive all the Liberty Entrepreneurs podcasts delivered directly to your email inbox each week, head on over to our website and subscribe. Don't worry, we won't send you any spam. Only the latest podcast every single week. Last but not least, please follow us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Full show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com. And I hope you enjoy the show. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I am here with Justin Longo and Amanda Mill, the founders of Liberty on the Rocks, which is a happy hour for libertarians, anarcho-capitalists, and other lovers of peace and freedom. They meet twice a month. We're here at the original chapter, right? Denver Liberty on the Rocks. That's right. The original chapter of Liberty on the Rocks. Their goal is to build a community, increase knowledge, and grow the movement of freedom. They have guest presenters bi-weekly, speak about 15 to 20 minutes, and then they have a discussion and try to find out how we can push forward the message of liberty throughout society. Justin, Amanda, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Longtime listeners will remember Amanda was one of the original co-hosts of Liberty Entrepreneurs. If you go back, first couple episodes, uh, she did a couple episodes for us, interviews, and she had a baby. When we tried to scale out and measure the, the value or the significance of Liberty Entrepreneurs versus birthing a child, uh, it kind of was an easy decision. But Amanda, it's good to see you again. So, Justin, fill in the blanks here. Give us a brief bio. How did you come up with the idea for Liberty on the Rocks? And tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, I am Justin Longo from the East Coast. I went to George Mason University uh, from 2000 to 2007, got a couple of degrees, fell in love with liberty and economics while I was at George Mason. Uh, so I've been a longtime libertarian, I'd say, since the year 2000. I've been a full-blown ANCAP anarchist since 2005. So when I got to Denver in 2007, uh, I started interning at Colorado's free market think tank, which is called Independence Institute. And that's where I met Amanda Mill, who was Amanda Terese at that time. So we said, hey, we're young. We're young and libertarian. We want to meet other young libertarians. How do we go about meeting other young libertarians? And we thought, hmm, a great place to do that might be the bar because young people like to go to the bar and socialize. So let's choose a bar as a venue and let's start a regularly meeting happy hour. And uh, that was back in 2008, so we've been going for eight years strong now here in Denver. Uh, but subsequently, we have expanded all across the, uh, the globe. We're in seven countries now. Yeah, and, and what type of spread do you have in the United States itself? Um, there's actually very little, it seems, in the, in the Northeast for, some, for whatever reason. So we're in a bunch of states around the country, but mostly not in the Northeast. Is that because the Northeast are more socialist? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, you think that in places where there is a lot of uh, anti-liberty stuff, you'd want something like Liberty on the Rocks to meet other like-minded individuals. Uh, and that could explain why we have a chapter in Cambodia. Mm. Well, I think it's a great idea. You know, I've come to several Liberty on the Rocks, and I've spoken at a few of them as well. And I can tell you that the relaxed atmosphere of meeting in a bar environment is very welcoming. It's very inviting. You know, it's not like we're inviting someone out to a protest. You know, we're not inviting someone out to paint Ron Paul signs and stand outside of the Federal Reserve. And, you know, it's, it's not weird. Everybody comes to a bar. Everybody watches games at a bar. Everybody c- goes out to eat. This is just a place for like-minded individuals to get together. You know, at Liberty Entrepreneurs, I try to push the idea of building freedom, right? Instead of picketing or, or protesting or petitioning, it's like build the life that you want. And that's exactly what you guys did with Liberty on the Rocks is you and Amanda – got together. Hey, we don't hang out with enough libertarians. We don't know enough libertarians. Let's build our own libertarian meetup. 
And the beautiful little baby you hear in the background is Amanda's baby. Uh, she is more than welcome to be interviewed as well. Um, I really love that. Can you walk me through the idea that you had whenever you were first starting to think about Liberty on the Rocks and how you started to implement it? I don't think we realized uh, the extent to which it has blossomed and grown and how much it would affect our personal lives. At least speaking for myself, I had no idea it would have such an effect on my personal life. But really, in the beginning, in, 2000, in early 2008, when I met Amanda, uh, we just wanted to meet friends, like other like-minded people, because we felt alone. And, and granted, I felt a lot less alone because I'd just gone to George Mason and I was around a bunch of libertarians in the econ department there. But Amanda felt like she was a lone wolf. And so she was just craving liberty philosophy and liberty talk and economics and everything like that. So she was like, I really want to hang around more people like us. And, I, and then we sort of came up with like, well, what's the best way of meeting other like-minded individuals? Yeah. And I can tell you that meetups aren't the easiest thing to get people to come to. I, I host a drum circle meetup and, you know, I'll have 20 people tell me they're going to come and then three or four people come. Every single time I come to Liberty on the Rocks, it's packed. You know, I mean, it, this place probably seats 50 or 60 people. And every time I come, it's it's it seems like it's standing room only. I mean, granted, you have a lot of good guests, but it's just really amazing how you're able to build this type of community that you want to live in. It's it's really special. Am Amanda, come on over here. Amanda Mill, how are you doing? Doing great, thanks. It's good to see you again. It's been a long time. It has. We miss you on Liberty Entrepreneurs. <laughs> I miss you guys too, definitely. Just being a mom is a full-time job. Yeah, I bet so. Well, we're, we're, I'm very glad that you're able to do it. Uh, tell me a little bit about Liberty on the Rocks and how you started it and what your vision was and how that's played out. Well, we were all working at the Independence Institute when we got it started. So it wasn't that there wasn't libertarians around. It was just an older group of people, you know. 60 and up pretty much would come to the events all the events were speeches basically someone would come and give a speech which was great a 45 minute lecture but she just sort of realized that it wasn't really what young people wanted was to sit there and listen to speeches all day long every single day and i think what we wanted was to find other people like us libertarian and younger we were in our mid-20s at the time we're 30 now so we're 30 plus so we're, we can't quite claim that being young anymore but yeah, we really wanted to meet younger people. We were kind of just not as interested in hanging out with that older crowd. And so we knew we had to have that welcoming environment, like you mentioned, and it had to be something fun if we wanted them to come out twice a month or once a month. We couldn't make it at a library serving coffee and, and having someone up there blabbing for two hours. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to give it the classroom environment. You know, you want to get your message across and you want to expose people to these new, new ideas of liberty and entrepreneurship. I mean, I remember the very first one I came to, Justin, I was talking to you about how I wish that there was more focus on actual entrepreneurship and business building in the libertarian movement. You know, we talk about the free market so much and we herald the free market, yet I don't feel that like there's enough focus being put on what I call the engineers of the free market, the uh, entrepreneurs. So I think you guys share this same vision. And in Tell me, uh, you invented something or you created something called Liberty Lab, which I think has a very similar vision as Liberty Entrepreneurs. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, we hosted an event about two years ago that was looking to find entrepreneurs who wanted to, essentially, if we could find it, we wanted them to rival government services. So, you know, we complain a lot about, oh, the post office stinks and, you know, the Fed stinks, all this kind of stuff. But you see things like Bitcoin, you see things like Airbnb rivaling the taxi services, rivaling uh, federal currency. So we wanted to help encourage that. So we basically held an event trying to get more people to think entrepreneurially about how they could advance freedom. And was this to like hear entrepreneurs' ideas on these types of products or services? How did it offer them support or what was the format? We weren't like big hitters or anything. We didn't have that much to give away, but we did give away a couple thousand dollars to different teams who had ideas. So we we're basically trying to help in the incubation stage by giving them a couple grand to go out and do what they wanted to do. So we basically chose the best. I think it was the top three uh, groups or, or individuals that wanted to do cool things. And we gave them money to go out and do those things. Yeah. Both of you, this is a question for both of you. How has creating Liberty on the Rocks provided more freedom or more liberty in your own lives? Liberty on the Rocks has provided my, me personally with more freedom in my life because being around people that have a similar philosophical worldview as myself, 
I still learn a lot from them in terms of philosophy, economics, liberty, just new ways of thinking about like old ideas. You know, you can read the same Rothbard book or the same uh, Hans Hoppe book or Hayek pamphlet over and over again and get sort of the same things out of it. But when I'm at Liberty on the Rocks and I'm around my friends who are of the same persuasion as me, they bring a new perspective and I've learned so much more just by being around uh, the friends I've met through Liberty on the Rocks. And that is, and as Walter Block says, like I would be a libertarian and pushing for liberty even if I knew for whatever reason that it would never happen. I would still do it because I get utility out of advocating for liberty and my friends have brought me so such a great so many great new perspectives on ideas I thought I knew and so my personal evolution has been remarkable in the last few years because of my friends that I met through Liberty on the Rocks so yeah I, I see Liberty on the Rocks and I can speak semi-intelligently about it since I've been friends with you for over a year now and I've come to several of these it's almost like Liberty on the Rocks is Liberty in action it's it's not just talk. You know, we, get to, we come together and we get to discuss some of these topics and we get to challenge each other, you know, friendly challenges. Sometimes you know, we get a little heated challenges because we are a mix of big L libertarian minarchists and anarcho-capitalists. But it gives us a chance to come together and spread ideas and challenge each other on some of these ideas that we have. Because I remember Jeffrey Tucker talking a long time ago, the one thing that he would tell young libertarians is, do not think that you've got it all figured out. And I think that that's something that libertarians tend to believe because we come so close to the truth and we understand freedom so, so deeply that we like to think that we've got it figured out a lot of the times. And whenever we meet other people at all different stages of their journey towards freedom, personal freedom, economic freedom, social freedom, that it really makes us take a step back and think, how did I overcome that? Or whenever I was presented with the problem of taxation is theft, how did it hit me? Because you can't just walk down the street and tell this guy out at the bus stop, like, hey, Bob, taxation is theft. What do you think about that? People aren't ready for that. You know, people aren't, you can't just do that. You can't go around hitting people in the head with a shovel. And I think Liberty on the Rocks is a really great way for people that are curious about freedom, but haven't necessarily read Rothbard or Mises or Hayek or Hop. It's a good place for them to comfortably come and get a little bit of flavor from all the different speakers. Maybe the speaker's a minarchist. Maybe the speaker is a left libertarian. Maybe they're an ANCAP, right? Maybe they're a business person that's created a business, or maybe they're not. But it's t you know, I was talking to my friend Eric Voorhees just yesterday or two days ago, and we were, we were discussing how minarchists are essential for the freedom movement. And I think that Liberty on the Rocks is a good hybrid of bringing the minarchists, bringing the anarchists, bringing the voluntarists, bringing the ANCAPs, bringing the entrepreneurs all together and giving a platform for people to peacefully and calmly have some of these discussions without feeling like they're really bucking the trend. Yeah, I, I think if, if your perception is that Liberty on the Rocks is a great amalgamation of people that are somewhat liberty friendly to some degree or like hardcore like we are, then I've achieved what I've wanted to achieve personally with this because I want it to be a meeting ground for a, a bunch of people that all have some inkling that liberty is good, whether they're ANCAPs or not. Um, I don't want this to be just preaching to the choir. I don't want this to be only ANCAPs allowed. I want this to be everybody who is curious about the ideas. Yeah, because it's going to take mediums and forums like this to pull in more and more people. Right? We can't, like I was saying, we can't just go around and telling the socialists how stupid or how wrong they are we need to help them get a better idea of what liberty is like real liberty or like market-based liberty we need an opportunity to show them what it means and because it's a very inviting message it's a very welcoming message and once you understand it it literally is going down the rabbit hole you, you're not going to come back out because you start seeing how society can organize itself without the powers that be or without the government forcing us to do things, right? So it is a very welcoming type of atmosphere. And, and being in a bar, I mean, as you guys can tell, it's starting to get a little bit more busy in here. People are starting to order drinks. This is what it's like, guys. This is Liberty on the Rocks. I wanted to have this interview not in a studio somewhere, but actually to try to give all of my listeners an idea of what Liberty on the Rocks is like, because I highly recommend everyone go out and check out a local chapter. And if there's not a local chapter, Justin, what should they do? If you don't have a local chapter near you, which is possible, uh, give Amanda or myself an email at 
Amanda at LibertyOnTheRocks.org or Justin at LibertyOnTheRocks.org, and we can talk to you on the phone, figure out who you are, what, you, what you're into, and see if you're a good fit for uh, running a Liberty on the Rocks chapter. So, Amanda, I've got a question for you. I know that my own personal journey from being a bit of a statist to being a minarchist to eventually being a philosophical anarchist took several years, and I, and I definitely didn't do it alone. Can you tell me what Liberty on the Rocks means to you and what you think it means to other people as a support mechanism and a gateway into finally reaching that philosophical understanding of peaceful anarchy? Yeah, so that's exactly what it is. It's a great gateway. So I think of it kind of in the same sense as I think of Facebook in that it helps keep people connected. Because there's, the, you know, those friends from high school that you never would talk to if it wasn't for Facebook, and now you kind of know what their lives are like and everything. Well, with Liberty on the Rocks, it makes it easy to keep coming out once a month or even every other month and talking to people about these issues. So, you know, it took me a couple of years to go from statism to becoming an anarchist, and I would not have been able to do it had I been left on my own to figure it out. Luckily, I had this group that I'd created that I'd come to twice a month, and I talk to people every single time, and Justin gets a lot of credit for that, but... You know, it really helps to be around these people and to talk to these people. It normalizes it. It gives you that information, and it makes it fun. It's not a boring thing to come to Liberty on the Rocks. We, we make it so you want to come out every month and learn more and make friends with people and go through that stage of becoming, hopefully, an anarchist, everybody. Yeah, and it definitely doesn't hurt that we're here at Happy Hour. We've got cheap drinks and cheap food. It makes everything a little bit more socially lubricated, doesn't it? So, Amanda, did I hear you right that you were not an anarchist whenever you started Liberty on the Rocks? Not even close. No, I wasn't. I want to say I, I got... I love the state. Shut up. I no, I was not. Um, when I came to the Independence Institute, I was more of a conservative. Uh, I hate to say it, but it was true. And I think I even argued with Justin about building a wall and having our jobs taken. And oh, my God, you sound like Donald Trump. I remember. I know, I know. Serious? This was in 2008. No, you know, it's like I'd watch John Salsa or whatever shows were on, and I'd come back and I'd talk to him about it, and he really helped turn me around. And, you know, just being around Justin, I think, and getting the ability, having the ability to spend so much time with him and, like, pick his brain on economics issues, I think that really helped to change me as well. If, again, if I'd been left to just read books, I don't think it would have happened. Yeah, it's just going to be boring. I mean, there's only so many books you can read and so many pamphlets and articles you can read. You have to, like, start putting this type of theory in action and seeing it work. I mean, as soon as I got here, right before we started recording, Justin, you were telling me how it's frustrating when people say, how are we going to implement anarchy, right? What, what does that mean? Whenever somebody asks you how we're going to implement anarchy, Justin, what, what does that mean and what is your answer? It tells me that the person hasn't fully understood what I mean and maybe the liberty movement as a whole means when we mean anarchy. They think it's a system that is applied to human beings and the way that I see anarchism and markets is not a system per se. It's more a lack of a control mechanism that is usually how we refer to systems. And the systems are just control mechanisms for other people. So when you leave people alone and let them treat each other in ways that are respectful, and that could mean charity, it could mean trade, it could mean a job, employment, entrepreneurship, anything like that, anything that is a consensual activity anything that is consensual to me is a market activity and you don't need a system to allow quote allow people to be consensual with one another that's sort of i hope a state of nature is people being consensual with one another now hobbes would disagree but <clears throat> i don't think we need some overarching coercive monopoly to make sure that we treat each other in some consensual way a lot of the pushback that i get from people is as you talk about the market as if it's this amorphous blob of something, right? It's like you say the market can provide this or the market's going to do this. I'm going to put you on the spot here. What would be your definition of the market or the free market or the marketplace? I think the market to me is the recognition of value in another human being and your attempt to gain by tapping into that value in some way and the and usually the only way you can get value from another human being is by offering something else in return i mean that's not always the case 
for for instance, my parents have bequeathed upon me many bounties that of which I never gave them anything in return. They just did it. So you, sure, you can have charity, but usually the, the market to me is somebody saying I want. I see value in somebody else or somebody else's labor or somebody else's products or services, and I'd like a piece of that value. And the way that usually human beings get that is by offering something in return. And so that trade, that win-win trade, otherwise it wouldn't take place, that win-win trade to me marks a market interaction, a consensual voluntary market interaction where both parties win. So tell me more about the the markets quote double thank you whenever you go somewhere and let's say you go to the butcher and you buy some meat from him and you pay him he says thank you and i say thank you why why is that we don't see this double thank you very often in society we definitely don't see this double thank you when we go to say the post office or the dmv what is the double thank you and why do we see it in the marketplace i think i believe we see the double thank you in market situations because both parties have gained from that interaction, from that consensual interaction. So both parties believe that they are now better off for having done that, and they are, uh, otherwise it wouldn't have taken place, and so therefore they're happy that they, have, they are now better off. I mean, as Mises said, the reason people man acts is because they feel a sense of uneasy, unease or uneasiness, and they imagine a better state, and so when they go get that better state, having been in a state of unease before, now having reached a better state because they've made a transaction, now they're happy and, they're, and they say, thank you. I'm, I'm, you've brought me to a better state. Now, let's actually conceptualize that and give an example for the listeners. If I sold you this beer for, let's say, $10 and you paid me $10 for this beer, why would we each say thank you? It's because I have felt a sense that of uneasiness in my sobriety and I wanted to rectify that. <laughs> And so I said, hey, there's this guy, Ash, and he's got this beer, and uh, I, I really want that beer. And he says, well, you, for this beer, you can give me six of those greenbacks you have in your wallet, or 10, depending on the situation, I might pay 10. Of course, at, on, at sporting events, I pay 10. So I say, look, uh, you want this $10 more than you want the beer. I want your beer more than I want my $10. We make the trade. We both feel a sense of accomplishment in a, in a better state, having made that trade. It's a great opportunity for people in the free market because the free market, unlike how a lot of socialists or people from the left see the marketplace, there's no force. I'm not forcing you to buy this beer. Maybe you think, well, that beer's not worth $10, but I'm just offering you an opportunity. I'm not telling you like, hey, you've got to pay me for this beer. Like the government says, hey, you got to pay me these taxes for my roads. Right. I'm just giving you an opportunity. I'm giving you an option. Hey, take it or leave it, man. Ten dollars. If you want to tell me eight dollars, I can say no to you just like you can say no to me at ten dollars. It really creates value. The marketplace creates value because at the end of any free market transaction, both parties feel that they've come out better. And that, that's something really, really key to this whole freedom movement is the marketplace provides an opportunity and a space for both parties of a transaction to feel that they got the best out of the transaction. Both people walk away as winners. And that's why we put, well, that's why I push so hard to try to promote entrepreneurship because like I've said many times, entrepreneurs are the engineers of the marketplace. But the more, the more opportunities we have to try to explore and experience and take advantage of these win-win opportunities, I think the more prosperous we're going to be, the more free we're going to be, we're going to have more peace because instead of seeing someone down the street selling something to us at a high price, we're not going to chastise them. We're just going to see it as an opportunity. And if we don't think it's a win-win, then we're not going to take it. It's as simple as that. I think the one, the craziest insight that when I learned this a while ago, I was just blown away. Um, I might have been at Mason when I, when I first heard this, but when a transaction takes place, no matter how small this transaction between two, cons two, two people is, that transaction creates wealth in the world because it's not, it's not as though the two people trading are trading things of equal value to themselves. They're trading things that they're getting the, they both think they're getting the best of the deal. And so if I'm winning and then Ash is winning when I purchase this beer from him, then we've just created wealth in the economy. It's not, it's not an equal trade. Otherwise, the trade wouldn't happen. So I think when people understand that entrepreneurs, by the very fact that they have this 
win-win situation that their whole life is built on how they can please consumers and and create a situation where they can have a win-win and they both say thank you that's creating wealth that's creating production and that keeps our standard of living the way it is despite the state and uh I, that's why i personally push entrepreneurship so hard at liberty on the rocks i beg people to come up for a 30 second soapbox and tell us what they're selling what blog they might have maybe they have a podcast promote themselves promote what they're doing because these entrepreneurs in our midst that live in the rocks and elsewhere are the ones that are providing freedom and production and a standard of living that is just mind-boggling to me sometimes yeah, absolutely and if i know that an entrepreneur is a liberty entrepreneur meaning that they understand that the entrepreneurship process and building a business and offering goods and services to other people is creating more freedom and like you said is creating more wealth I'm much more likely to go and buy that person's goods or service I mean we got our buddy Sean Owen sitting over here on his computer and he runs Southern Hospitality in Denver which accepts Bitcoin any chance that I'm downtown I love going in and I mean not only because I'm from the south and I love eating ribs and you know mac and cheese but I love going and visiting his business because I know that he's a Liberty entrepreneur and I hope soon to start a forum that we Liberty entrepreneurs can start to you know, talk to each other and support each other's businesses because ultimately what we're doing is we are building the freedom that we want in the world. Just like you built Liberty on the rocks because it's a community that you wanted to build. I build a drum circle and I'm building Liberty entrepreneurs because it's the community that I want. If we can start networking with different Liberty oriented entrepreneurs around our communities, around the states, around our countries, and, and eventually around the world because we have this digitally connected world, I think it's the best option that we have to support each other in this road towards more freedom. It's a, a really beautiful type of, of idea. Anyone that understands the marketplace or even entrepreneurs that aren't liberty oriented yet I guarantee that they appreciate what freedoms entrepreneurship has given to them Justin you're definitely a liberty entrepreneur I appreciate what you're doing here at Liberty on the Rocks I really thank you for coming on the show I thank you for letting me speak at Liberty on the Rocks and on controversial topics to get people thinking and getting them curious um, is there anything that you'd like to, to mention that we didn't cover or any contact details anything about L-O-T-R, and that's not Lord of the Rings, people. That's Liberty on the Rocks. Uh, yeah, if, if you'd like to check out the website, it's libertyontherocks.org. Um, if you'd like to start a chapter, there's a start a chapter tab on the website. On the website, you can also see where all of our existing chapters are. Like I said, we're in seven countries around the world, United States, Canada, Germany, Singapore, New Zealand, Australia, Cambodia, just to name a few. Uh, and so, really, you have to understand, Libra on the Rocks was created, as you've heard, simply for Amanda and myself to meet other friends in the Liberty community. So if you want to, to meet other people and you don't have one near you, give us a shout. Uh, we'll talk to you on the phone, see, see what you're about, and see if you're a good fit to run Liberty on the Rocks. But we would love for you to use this tool to meet people. It's, a, it's, it's enriched my life beyond measure, and I'm really glad that I have my community here in Denver. Well, Amanda, Justin, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate you both, and we'll see you soon. Actually, we'll see you for the next two hours or so as we uh, drink rum on the rocks and listen to people speak about liberty. Amanda, thank you. Thank you. You just listened to episode 37, How to Create a Liberty-Based Community, with my guests Justin Longo and Amanda Mill. If you would like to meet and network with other like-minded people who are building a freer future, check out Liberty on the Rocks. Tell Justin and Amanda that you heard them on Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. Until then, keep building freedom.